Hello and welcome to another episode of Back Non Report with our good friend Mike May. Mike, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Uh, I can't believe we're uh, getting close to the end of the year. It's been a great year in golf, and uh, it's always fun getting on this show with you to talk about it. Well, it's been an amazing year, and we'll have a wrap-up show sometime here in another couple of weeks. But uh, there are some things we want to talk about. I know you've been traveling on the LPGA Tour for a couple of weeks. Uh, I got to see the end of the season and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, I was in Alabama last week playing uh, several different courses down there. I had a great time. Was exhausted, though. Okay. Had to come home and rest up a little bit. Uh, but there's a lot been going on in the golf world, Mike, and we want to talk about some of these things if we could real quick. Number one, and Tiger's always number one, right? So when something ha happened around Tiger, it's, it's big news. So we haven't seen Tiger Woods on the golf course for a while, but he is scheduled to play in his annual he Hero World Open held at Albany in the Bahamas next week. Videos of Woods swinging a club and walking are extremely positive, but questions still remain, Mike. Can Woods ever regain the level of play he once possessed? Will it be good to see him on the, you know, it will be good to, to see him on the course playing, or will it be painful to think of what he once was and probably never will be again? Or can Woods really compete at his world-class level? Uh, the Hero World Classic is a four-round no-cut event, so if he's healthy enough, he will get to see the, the latest version of El Tigre, and he's going to play four rounds. Um, Top names, Mike, are in the field. Scotty Scheffler, Victor Hovland, Max Homa, Max Fitzpatrick, Brian Harmon, Wyndham Clark, Jordan Spieth, Cameron Young, Keegan Bradley, Colin Morikawa, uh, Justin Thomas, Ricky Fowler, Will Zaltoris, uh, Sepp Straka, Jason Day, Sam Bernstein. That's great right there. Uh, Xander Shoffley and um, uh, Patrick Canley actually opted out of the Hero World Challenge. And uh, Justin Rose and Lucas Glover were added. So... Pretty strong field. Looking forward to seeing what Tiger's up to and how he fares uh, next week. I, I'm going to be watching that. What about you? Oh, definitely. I think that uh, I think everyone's generally pleased that he's going to compete and that he feels as if he's physically able to compete. And frankly, in his words in the past, he never competes unless he feels he's got a chance to win. So um, it's exciting to see Tiger coming back. I was uh, um, somewhat shocked, but not surprised because. I think I've got to the point that I never want to count him out. And uh, though his most recent injury back in the springtime really was was tough to watch. Uh, he seems to be optimistic. Uh, he's actually been out walking on a golf course. Uh, he caddied for his son, carried a bag for like 54 holes at a Notre Dame Day event. And his son, um, the high school team, the Benjamin School down here in Florida, won the Class 1A state championship. Tiger was not allowed to caddy for him, but I'm sure he was out there walking around. So, uh, a more mobile tiger has been spotted in recent weeks in various parts, and that's good for golf. Can you imagine yeah. the painful rehabilitation he has gone through multiple times now to get himself back in shape to be able to play at that level of competition? I, I just, if it were me, I just, you get to the point where is this all worth it? I've already done so much. Why do I have to continue to beat myself up like this? Could you, could you put that amount of effort into it? I've uh, I've been playing sports all, all my life, and I've never had anything close to the injuries or the surgeries that he's had. So I, I can't even begin to understand how uh, difficult it's been. Uh, he's been in relative seclusion. Or he's out of the public eye for months on end, just trying to get better, get stronger. And uh, so I all credit to his perseverance and his uh, commitment to uh, getting better. I think he wants to get better so he can play more golf with his son. If he happens to be good enough to play in the Masters, so be it. So we'll see. Could be. Uh, we're always interested in seeing Tiger, no matter what. So that's that's a good thing. Number two on the list. Um, this is kind of a surprise. You know, they've been adding names and adding players to the new Arena Golf uh, League that Tiger Woods and Rack Rory McIlroy have invested in through their uh, investment company, uh, Tomorrow TMRW. Uh, the roof fell in. Uh, they're building it down there in Palm Beach on the Palm Beach uh, College campus, uh, the SoFi Arena. And uh, the construction, somehow the power went out and it let the, the air, the, the dome is held up by air and that let that fall in and it damaged a bunch of stuff. And so now 
they basically canceled the season for 2024 and said it's going to be 2025 uh, before they'll even start that up. Um, if you're not familiar with the Indoor Golf League, uh, Rory and Tiger, along with uh, their investment company, are attempting to start an arena-type golf league with the top names in golf. Several of the biggest names have signed on, along with team owners and sponsors. Um, TGL representatives tried to spin the delay by saying, despite this new timeline for the venue, TGL remains excited about the future of TGL and will continue to build excitement between now and the start of the season with players, fans, and teams. TGL has begun to update plans and timelines and is confident that the extension will only improve delivery. Well, that's true. They got another year to, to make plans and get everything ready to go, but they've been doing it now for two years, so I think they were ready. Tiger said, I've been a believer in TGL, and as the momentum has built this past year, I'm even more excited about what this can become for fans of the game all around. Although the events of last week will force us to make adjustments to our timelines, I'm fully confident that this concept will be brought to life by our committed players. The Warrior also had a co comment. The postponement brings mixed feelings of disappointment and excitement. Above all, we're happy that no one was injured. We're looking forward to launch TGL. So uh, even team owners, uh, Arthur Blank, Fenway Sports Group, uh, Alexis O'Hanahan, Andrew Cohen, and Mark L Lazary weighed in with comments all expressed their support for the Upstart Indoor Golf League and said they fully support the future of the Golf League. You got any comments about the, the dome falling in and the TGL, Mike? Yes, uh, that dome situation, uh, that's down in my neck of the woods. It was up about 45 minutes from here in Palm Beach Gardens. And uh, I was shocked at what happened because the storm that has impacted South Florida also canceled the Pro-Am at the CME Group Tour Championship in Naples. So that storm system impacted all of us from the West Coast to the East Coast. And it wasn't even a tropical storm. It was a big wind and rain event. And of course, between now and 2025, we have another hurricane season. So if the conditions that we had last week brought that facility down, uh, is it going to be able to survive a hurricane or even a tropical storm? So fingers crossed on whether not impacting this area in the next 12 months so they can rebuild and recraft and uh, make it stronger. So we'll see. Mike, uh, another, speaking of Rory McIlroy, since we mentioned him in the TGL story, uh, Rory has resigned his seat on the PGA Tours policy board. Jordan Spieth, who has served in several capacities on the PGA Tours administrative boards, will replace Rory through the end of his term in 2024. Rory was very critical of LIV when it started and, and rated the best players from the PGA Tour. He waged a, a hot verbal war with Greg Norman and his LIV Golf League in the press and on social media. He felt severely betrayed when the current deal with the Saudis PIF was announced. He also did not like that he was not consulted prior to the deal and was only advised of it two hours before it was announced. Many tour members who opted to stay on the PGA Tour and forsook the large sums to jump to LIV were also miffed that the PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan did not appraise them of the membership of the deal and did it behind closed doors. Now with the deadline looming at the end of this year to have a deal in place, it appears that the, the deal might actually be in jeopardy and not get done. Um, a couple of other investments have made inquiries and were interested in investing in the PGA Tour, but were similarly uh, dismissed due to a preliminary arrangement with the, the Saudis. Mike, what do you make of all this? Rory stepping down. He's talking about leaving uh, Florida and moving back to, uh, to Ireland as his permanent residence. Uh, he seems to be distancing himself from the PGA Tour. Uh, you know, what's he, you know, is he just going to play golf and take the money and run or, you know, what, what do you think? Um, you know, Rory was uh, quite adamant about his feelings about live early on. And then as time has gone by as recently as a few days ago or a few weeks ago, he made a comment like, let's, uh, let's try to have a compromise and uh, a treaty or a peace so that world golf can carry on in a, in a sort of, a organized a peaceful setting. And uh, I think he's probably, he's been on two parts of the equation. At first he was saying, I don't like live. Now he's saying we can live with the live. Let's, let's try to find some you know, common ground. So he may have got to the point he's just said too much, or maybe he's just set up and 
just wants to step out of the picture and just focus on his golf and his family, which is probably a, a good idea. Uh, as far as moving from Palm Beach County, where he lives now, where the weather is pretty nice throughout the year, uh, especially November, December through April, and going back to Ireland, um, that just may be a personal choice because his parents are probably not getting any younger and maybe miss his home. But um, I think Rory should just best you know, focus on his game. He hasn't won a major since, what, 2014, and he's been close. And for him to get involved in golf politics is probably not a good idea, but uh, I think everybody – sort of feels like Rory does. Can we just find a common ground and move on? Uh, one quick story. I did have lunch with some LPGA caddies on the day this was all announced back in June. And um, they made a comment that the people that live actually approached the PGA Tour and, and wanted just to be a part of world golf with the PGA Tour in a supporting complimentary role. And basically they were tossed out of the room. So that's why we have a live golf because they were not allowed to join the party in retrospect, probably should have let him in because Saudi golf has been part of golf for 30, 40 years. They're not new to golf, just new to having their own circuit. So, um, and, and what was promised back in, in June by the PJ Tour, we haven't heard anything since then. And I'm not sure when we will or what they'll say. Yeah, and time is growing nigh. Uh, it, the, the deadline on the agreement with the PIF, with the Saudis, is uh, the end of the year. Now, they could extend that, Mike. Uh, continue to negotiate if they feel they're close to get get to everything all the ducks in a row um and and my question has always been well what happens to liv uh you know uh, if i'm an liv player i can't get world ranking points especially since the owgr the official world golf ranking uh group just denied giving world ranking points to the liv if i can't get world ranking points on the liv I, when my contract's up i got to get out of there and get back to the pga tour so I can get back to playing in the majors. So um, it, it, there's a lot of stuff still involved in this up in the air. We've been talking about it now, I think, for over two years. Um, I'm really kind of tired of it myself. I wish they'd get something done. And let's let's get on with the, the world. What do you think? I, I think you're right. Uh, those players like Dustin Johnson and Brooks Koepka and Chambo and Taylor Gooch and uh, Cameron Smith, they're really existing in obscurity. They're making big money but they're totally off the radar screen. Rarely, um, people have to go either way to watch uh, the CW coverage and not every newspaper gives uh, gives coverage to, um, unless it's an AP report and they have room in a newspaper. So if you wanna make big money and, and exist in obscurity, then play live, unless we get some type of uh, agreement. Um, as far as the world golf ranking points, I understand, but I don't understand. I think these players are deserving of something. Uh, surely there can be a, you know, some type of compromise on you get 75%, but I'm not privy to those details, but uh, the golf continues to exist in a sort of a disjointed state. And that's not good for the game or the sponsors or the fans. You know, Mike, yeah. even as a lifelong the golf fan and you and I, I mean, people like us, we live the game, right? We, we, we do enjoy it. We love it to its core. And since this LIV stuff, Mike, personally, I have just become disenchanted with the whole thing. I find myself not even able to watch terms. The fall tournaments were so watered down because there's no talent there. You, you know, you're, 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 you're watching guys that are, have not been able to make it or, you know, on the outskirts uh, of the, you know, of the tour. Um, and that's great for them. It's a wonderful opportunity. But I want to see the guys that, that are really the, that, that compete in the majors that, that, you know, are the world-class players. And after the Ryder cup, now we just don't see those guys. Um, it, it, I don't, I don't like this fall tour at all. I'm not, I'm not into it. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just me, I guess, but I, I wish they, I, I can't wait till they get something settled for sure. And, and we can move on. Hey, Mike, totally let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's switch gears here a little bit. You have uh, traveled the LPGA tour all year. I've been very close to the players in action. Uh, what is your take? Of course, they just wrapped up the season. They had all the awards. Uh, Lilia Vu, uh, Athaya Thetikul, Angel Yin. Um, you had uh, uh, I, Ron Rue, uh, Jane Park, Megan King, uh, Lexi Top. All won awards at the end of the year for different uh, things that they gave out. Uh, give us a kind of a recap and what you saw and what you think uh, of the 23, at the end of the 23 uh, LPGA season. 
Well, anyone can win on any given week in the LPGA. At, um, and, and I know that's sort deep, of the cliche. They? They're very deep, aren't they? Very deep. Uh, it's a very global tour. Uh, we start out in the U.S. in January for a couple of events. So we go to Asia in like February to uh, to Thailand and Singapore. And I think we're going to go back to Blue Bay, China uh, in 2024. Then we come back to the U.S. for a long stretch. Then we head over to Europe for a few events in August and come back to the U.S. and then go back to Asia, to Thailand, Singapore, China, and, um, and South Korea. The players, uh, we have... Thailand, one of the top countries in the world for producing female golf, as well as South Korea. The Americans are strong. The Europeans are strong. Um, it is a, a tour that uh, is uh, global in nature uh, and deep. And uh, the, the players um, generally get along. Uh, they're very close to the fans, happy to pose for pictures and autographs. It's a very fan-friendly competitive tour, and the uh, it's fun to be out there. Of course, this in the year, we had Lilia Vu, Player of the Year, Boudier, Celine Boudier from France won four events. Allison Lee has come in second the last three times, so she is emerging. Uh, Lexi Thompson had a strong surge towards the end, but didn't make the top 60. Neither did Lydia Ko. So top names are not guaranteed to make the top 60 in CME. And uh, 2024 will be a, a great year. It's an Olympic year. And um, this, this schedule is just released. And... Uh, We'll, we'll be in Hawaii in November and Florida in, in January and everything in between uh, during February, March, April, May on to uh, this, uh, November. The CME, uh, the CME Globe always win, uh, ends up the season and it's a big purse, the biggest purse in women's golf and, and uh, all that kind of thing. And, and that's all really good. Uh, a couple things that uh, were in there is this, uh, the new Annika uh, championship was there and then the grant thornton is going to be held uh next week um what what are your thoughts on those two the annika and the grant thornton oh the annika event uh is quickly becoming sort of a sub major uh um, quasi major kind of thing, quasi major right? the only problem is it's held in november we can have a limited field of 120 players rather than a full field of 144 uh, just don't have enough daylight precisely so the venue the pelican uh Country Club in um, or Golf Club in Bel Air, Florida, a suburb of Clearwater, is spectacular. Probably the most well manicured, maintained golf course we play all year. It really does have a, a Masters type feel, but it's not April; it's November. And uh, again, this is these are we have more and more top flight courses coming on board, more and more sponsors. Uh, CME is committed to giving the winner not two million next year. But four million to win the tournament just concluded two days ago. So um, it's an exciting time to be in women's golf, and it's exciting for uh, the players to, uh, to sort of be beneficiaries. It's too bad Mickey Wright, Judy Rankin, uh, Kathy Whitworth, and those guys could not have been around to to play and compete for this uh, big money that uh, they were deserving of years ago. Yeah, you know, we heard, you know, probably well when Michael won. Became, came on the scene in 2010, the, the LPJ Tour is almost broke. Uh, so in just 13 years, okay, and while Michael was there for 10 years, he turned that around and now look at the purses and and be and and be sure all this is attributable to Michael Wan, okay? Uh, Molly Marcu, uh, Solomon, that she does fine. She's kind of held the, 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 the reins and done okay. But all this stuff that they're seeing right now, all this foundation was built by Michael Wan, and he deserves the credit for that. He's moved on to the USGA now and, and has his own new battles there. But uh, Michael just did a tremendous job building the LPGA Tour to what it is today, as well as the young women that play and compete and, and do all the things that you said. You know, they're very fan friendly. Uh, you know, they, they take their time and, and, and they're, you know, very amenable to all that kind of thing. So. Um, Mike, we're, we're big fans of the LPGA and, and, uh, you, you're close to it almost, uh, well, what, 20 some weeks out of the year. Uh, right. so, uh, it, it just continues to grow and the purses that they're getting are, are just fantastic. Uh, good for them. And it's great to see these young women compete and, and succeed. Mike, yeah. anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up today? Yes, uh, just a quick thought on uh, the commissioner of the LPGA, Molly Marcus-Saman. Uh, she's very visible at these golf tournaments. I see her all the time. Uh, 
They have a number of grassroots events they're doing. So she's fine in her own niche, uh, well aware of what Michael Wan uh, did and what she inherited. And, and she's adding her own uh, aspect to, the, to these tournaments and the sponsors. Uh, uh, you know, she's a former collegiate athletic director, so she's used to shaking hands and uh, making friends and uh, creating new alliances and allegiances. And uh, so I think the, the best days of the LPJ are in front of her. And I think Molly's doing a great job and uh, I'm sure she's um, got her work cut out for her, but uh, every day she's making an impact. And again, she's very visible, very fan friendly and um, uh, just acts, um, she's, she's very comfortable out there and I think people love to see her. Mike, I hope uh, listeners will log on to Ohio, Indiana and Michigan golf journals. Check out our articles for uh, uh, November. We actually featured uh, Christmas gifts for golfaholics. So if you've got a golfer in your life or if you are a golfer and looking for something to suggest to somebody for Christmas, check out our great lists in all three of our of our magazines. You've got a couple great articles in Indiana uh, about uh, local happenings there and also about uh, uh, the young pancake uh, woman uh, that had just a tremendous summer uh, for an amateur, just a great year. And she's a name that we're going to want to watch, uh, going forward as she, uh, thinks about turning pro on these days. Yes. Uh, it's, um, we try to document as much as we can in those three States. Uh, um, and so it's, uh, our, our best issues are yet to come. We're pretty proud of what we've done. And, uh, uh, December, January, February should be spectacular as, as, uh, we always aim they should be. Mike, thanks a lot for coming on and, uh, covering these topics with us today and uh, look forward to seeing you here in a few weeks, maybe. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.